2001 was the day my father was done with getting out of bed. At that point, the tumor was so big, he couldn't eat anymore, and when the doctor stuck a camera down his throat, it was blocked by a cancerous cloud of cells as black as Manhattan streets. So while New York was shaking the dust, my father was on a respirator, eyes pleading for this to stop. You can't put out cancer like a fire. It doesn't make ash to be carried off by the wind. So while America was dusting off its flags, I was holding my father's IV hand in the hospital, praying that the surgery to remove the breathing tube would be successful. Luckily it was, but luck has entropy. Eventually it runs out. I fed my father crushed Ambien and little juice boxes of Ensure into his gastrointestinal tube, kissing him goodnight on the cheek and trying not to smell the death all over him, praying that he'd be up watching television the next morning. And for three months, Instead of memorizing pictures of almost 3,000 dead faces, I could guide you around the UMC ICU with my eyes closed as if I were running from a cancerous cloud. I could negotiate the simple turns of that small city. I could be just as brave as a soldier forced to fight the good fight, standing at attention with stiff grief while the world slowly dies. When we bombed Afghanistan that October, my father merely coughed. He was so tired by then that even if a bomb went off right there in the hospital, he'd want to be the one wearing the vest so I can attest that I wasn't invested enough to give a fuck because my father was dying. I wasn't out protesting because who has a sit-in against a disease worse than fundamentalism, ego, hate, or ignorance? It's not like you can pump politicians full of chemotherapy in the hopes that they'll shrink away, but they too have their own entropy. Cancer is an expanding universe using your body as its billboard like fire. It will destroy everything. It will make you not want to get out of bed for the rest of your life. There was no 21 gun salute at my father's service. His name will never be read at a memorial for so many dead. See, maybe you can only truly kill cancer by dying. Maybe it'd be better to just jump out of a window and watch the sky filled with smoke as 110 floors collapse like breath. And just as the sky went silent on September 11th at 9.26 a.m., it became stuffed only with stars on December 23rd at 4.10 a.m. and both made me not want to get out of bed. So I'm sorry if my patriotic duty is to the memory of my father and not screaming anti-war slogans, I have stopped counting however many times my friends and family have been to Afghanistan and Iraq, and just like cancer, I don't know what to do about it. A cancerous cloud of smoke and ash makes the world oblique. In the end, it isn't them, it's us not wanting to get out of bed. God walks out of the room and doesn't come back, even they run out of entropy. Right. Yes. That was scary.